Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the Fantasy Heavyweight Tournament rankings. As um, my Interactive Heavyweight Tournament continues. And this is going to be on my number 23 heavyweight. And that is former WBC champion Samuel Peter. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, um, Samuel Peter, and the tournament's coming, guys. I'm gonna start posting the matchups uh, this weekend sometime, so don't worry about that. Um, but Samuel Peter, um, this guy um, debuted in 2001 and won all of his fights. He was rolling um, through 2004 when he finally faced off against a former world title challenger in Charles Schufer. And he was able to beat Charles Schufer by a 10 round decision, unanimous decision. So that got people kind of looking at him. Then he uh, turned that win um, and took on a guy named Jeremy Williams in December of 04 and would absolutely destroy Jeremy Williams with a second round knockout. And that really got people looking over at Samuel Peter after that. So um, really had the attention going his way. He knocked out a guy named Yankee Diaz um, and veteran Torres Sykes. And that led to a 2005 mandatory number one contenders bout against former WBO champion Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko, the last couple years, had suffered defeats, and people said if he were to lose this fight against Peter, then that would be all she wrote, uh, potentially on his career. And Peter would come at Vladimir. He would knock Vladimir down three times in this fight, but Vladimir would box well enough, outwork Peter to a 12-round unanimous decision as he would um, become the mandatory number one contender. That's, that was a setback, but Peter, excuse me, stayed in the mix. He returned against a couple veterans, uh, Robert Hawkins and Julius Long. Um, and uh, then in, um, in September of 06, he got a big opportunity against former um, two division champion, James Lights Out Tony, in which he, would get a controversial split decision win in that first fight, in a fight that a lot of people thought Tony won. Then he um, would fight Tony again about four months later in January of 07, and this time he'd leave no doubt getting a unanimous decision. Then a big opportunity presented itself nine months later as he would get a chance to fight for the WBC's interim belt against uh, big time Jamil McCline and um, these two guys would go at it in a good one, but um, McCline would actually put Peter down a bunch of times. But uh, Peter would be able to weather that and outwork McCline to a 12 round unanimous decision and punch his ticket to a title shot. And in March of 08, he would get the first his first crack at a world title against Oleg Maskayev. Peter would break down Maskayev in this fight, bully him, beat him up, leave no doubt, with a six round TKO win as he became the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Then, um, seven months later, in October of 08, he would take on a returning Vitaly Klitschko, who was a former champ, former two time champion, who hadn't fought in almost four years at the time of this fight. A lot of people were skeptical on what they were going to see out of Klitschko. Well, Peter was a perfect opponent for Klitschko because Peter just kind of is a stationary target, doesn't move a lot, and, and Vitaly just teed off on him. He landed big shots, used his size, his height, beat up Samuel Peter, and Samuel Peter would suffer the first knockout loss of his career and would lose the WBC title and would never be a world champion again. He would return 
in March of 09 trying to get back into the mix but lose a majority decision to Eddie Chambers. After that, he would go on a four-fight win streak against lower-level opposition um, that led to a 2010 rematch and a chance at the Unified Heavyweight Championship of the World against Vladimir Klitschko. And Klitschko, this time, was much different and better, and he would tee off on Samuel Peter, knocking him out in the 10th round of this fight, and that would be the last time Samuel Peter would compete for a heavyweight championship. He would stay in boxing. He would lose his next fight by knockout to Robert Hellenius. He would take about three years off, three and a half years off. He would return, got a couple wins. Then he, in 2016, he took on Kubrat Pulev and um, got stopped in that fight. And then would, uh, you know, win or lose, taking on lower level competition. And then um, his last two fights in 2019, he got stopped by Huey Fury and then Arslan back Mahmudov. And that was all she wrote for Samuel Peter in his career. So overall, Sam Peter competed in three world title fights going one and two. He had a nice knockout win against Oleg Maskaev. That was his lone a victory in a title fight. And then, um, you know, he had the, the two losses to the Klitschko brothers, which nothing to hang your head about there. I mean, Vlad and Vitaly are sitting at number one and number three on this list. So, you know, Samuel Peter, he lived in the era of the Klitschko brothers. He, you know, he really didn't get a chance to unify belts because uh, when he was champion, he had to fight Vitaly Klitschko. Um, I'm sure Peter would have went after that. Peter was a 6'2 guy, stationary target, but a guy that um, would throw punches and brawl and try to knock you out. And he was, he was an interesting, always an interesting and fun guy to watch fight, you know. Um, but just got overwhelmed by some of his opponents. So I'm interested in seeing if he can make it out of the first round, uh, depending on his matchup. And, and that's it. That's my number 23 heavyweight for my interactive fantasy heavyweight tournament. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been here with the truth.